just a little pro tip. If you're gonna do this for Thanksgiving, make sure you start early. If you want a delicious turkey this Thanksgiving, you want it grilled, but not just grilled, you want a great recipe for your grilling experience. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to grill a whole turkey over an open fire. We're gonna show you a really good brine recipe and how to season it for maximum flavor. And I'm also gonna show you an open fire cooking process that's gonna cook that turkey all the way through and make it super delicious. Now the key to cooking this particular turkey is spatchcocking it so we can open it all the way up. It's gonna give it a nice color and a delicious flavor. On both both sides of the turkey plus it's gonna allow the turkey to cook a little bit quicker all the way through now if you don't have a rotisserie of this style cooking it over a grate you can do the manual flippity flip it'll probably work just as good but if you have a rotisserie it's even better there's nothing as good as any meat cooked directly over a real open fire so today we're gonna show you how it's done all right so into the brine we're gonna put one Little bear honey sweet onion. Cut this up. It doesn't have to be super fine in this case because it's just going into the brine. Smash and peel my garlics here. It's three to five cloves. Depends on how big your garlic cloves are. All right, now we have a whole yellow lemon. It's already been rinsed, so we're gonna cut this in half. If one or two seeds escapes in there, it's fine. It's not gonna add or take away anything to the brine. We're gonna go ahead and slice up the lemon so that the rinds are in there too. We're gonna mix a total of one gallon of water, but to get started, we're gonna put about six cups of water in here. This is a half a cup of Morton's coarse kosher salt. Now, if you're using a turkey that does not already have solution in it, you can use one and a quarter cups of salt or a one cup of salt and uh, one cup of sugar. But the turkey we're using is a butter ball. It already has 8% solution in it. Still gonna need a little bit of salt to give that turkey a little bit more pop. All right, we're gonna dissolve all this salt. You could probably use one of those immersible blenders. It might work a little bit faster. I don't have one. Is it Father's Day yet or is it Christmas? Hmm. We're gonna take a whole cup of light brown sugar. I like that little hint of molasses. And in just a little while, you're gonna see this brine water start to turn pink and then purple and then blue and then it's clear again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Two tablespoons of nor caldo de pollo, chicken bouillon. I like it because it has the poultry seasoning. It has a little bit of chicken flavor. And friends, I do highly recommend that you whisk the consomme into your brine. If you throw it in and then try to shake up your jug or whatever, for some reason it tends to stick. Now, wow is an all-purpose seasoning. It's a barbecue rub. Has a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic, a little bit of onion, and some other really good flavors that go good on anything. A tablespoon of coarse black pepper, two teaspoons of celery seeds. We're gonna go ahead and get these bay leaves in here. Dump all this stuff right here in, into the brine and let all these flavors get married. And in the meantime, we're gonna spatchcock the turkey. So let's get this to the side and grab our turkey. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut this turkey right down the backbone here. That's how we're gonna spatchcock it. I'm gonna tap it right here in the middle a little bit just to get it split open, just like that. A little bit of ice on the bottom. So we're using a non-perfumed trash bag. Those are perfectly fine. And just be careful because you do have some sharp bones in there. If you wanna get the turkey in here, drop it in the ice chest. And I'm basically just gonna dump all of the brine ingredients in here and get that last little bit of stuff in here too. And that should be good. We're gonna dump the rest of this water in here, nice and tight. Fold this over to the side. I'm gonna pour a little bit more ice up here and I'm gonna lay this little bit of ice still here on top, really nice and cold for the next 10, 12 hours. We'll see you guys in the morning. Now, before we get the turkey on the fire, I want to share a bit about the delicious olive oil I'm using in today's video, Graza. Now, I really do enjoy Graza's olive oils, and the truth be told, I had already filmed this video and had been using Graza before they ever approached me to work together. It was a natural partnership, and I'd like to share three things with y'all. First, Graza's transparent about their process. There's a lot of information out there when it comes to olive oil. Graza makes it simple to understand their process for single origin, single varietal olives, and how they form two different, delicious olive oils. Which brings me to the second point. The flavor of these oils are bright, fresh, and pack a robust flavor. You can taste the flavor bomb of a difference right out of the bottle. And that's my third point. The bottle isn't just pretty looking on the shelf, but it's easy to use, easy to control when cooking and finishing your dishes. So if you want to try Graza, head to the link in the description to buy the sizzle and drizzle combo pack and use the code ARNIE5 at checkout for $5 off. Thanks again to Graza for sponsoring this video. Now on to the turkey cooking. Vamonos!
All right, so today we're using the uh, Pro Pit Javelin. It's an open fire grill. We're using the rotisserie that comes with the Javelin. It's a manual rotisserie that you turn by hand. I went ahead and tied the turkey by the wings, by the neck on both sides, also through the breast on two different spots. And I tied the drumstick to the other end. We're making it a little taut, so hopefully it stays in place. It's our first time doing it this way. I do think it's gonna be all right. The other thing I'm doing here, now I'm using mesquite lump charcoal. It's a really great, long, hot burning charcoal. I'm also using some honey mesquite wood for flavor as well as some pecan if you guys have been following me for a while and you know in my previous turkey videos i love pecan on turkey so i'm also adding some pecan for a little more complex smoky flavor so we have the really good flavor of a little hint of mesquite a little hint of pecan we have the brine we have the natural flavor of the turkey and it is a butter ball which already has a little bit of solution in there but the brine's really going to kick up that flavor and then we added the brisket rub with just the right amount of salt and peppers in it to give it that extra little kick of flavor. This trick is gonna be delicious. All right, now we're gonna come down just a couple of inches. I think our heat is just about right. So we're gonna come down maybe about four or five inches on both sides, just to get that turkey a little closer to the heat. Yeah, I can feel that heat a lot better now. Maybe 231.5 degrees right there. <laughs> All right, when you're loading extra charcoal or adding a little extra, you wanna put it at the farthest end away from your fire, away from your meat so that it comes up gradually a little at a time. Once it gets all lit up, you don't want to have too, too much heat. You want a nice, slow, controlled burn, so you start it at the end and let it come up slow. Added a little bit of wood chunks here. I want to get a little fire going there. We want to make sure we get a little bit of that smoky goodness onto our turkey here. You can see where the drumstick here is starting to change a little bit of color. It's starting to look a little bit purple. That means we're cooking. We're starting to cook really, really good. I'm pretty happy with the way it's cooking right now. It's not like a ribeye where you're in and throw it in there or a fajita and just do a couple of flippity flips and you're done. Open fire is a longer cooking process. Usually you're cooking bigger pieces of meat. You always got to be adding wood wood chunks, a little bit of charcoal sometimes. A lot of open fire cooks just use straight wood. Personally, I like to blend a little bit of wood with a little bit of lump charcoal because it's a little bit less work that way. The lump charcoal tends to last longer and burn and, and that way you don't have to stay on top of it all the time. But it is a game of patience. It is a game of paying attention to what you're doing. It's about looking at your meat. It's about feeling the heat with your hands. There's no thermometer here, folks. I can tell I'm hotter on this side, which I'm okay with because the drumsticks usually can go a little bit higher than the Rest, so I'm okay with that. Still got just the right amount of heat up here, so we're coming along pretty good. All right, friends, it's been pretty close to three hours. I really thought we'd be a little further along. Color-wise, it's time to crank the heat up a little bit higher, so we're gonna do that. Once it gets hot, everything just kind of sets and it doesn't wobble anymore. That means it's kind of tightening up. I do want to check the temperature. I'm gonna check right in here in the thigh area. That's usually the thickest part. I'm looking at 148 degrees. Okay, we're almost there, friends. All right, let's check the breast. We're only 113 here. 114, 115. Yeah, we need a little more heat on this side. So I'm gonna move more of that fire over this way so we can hurry the breast along and get a little bit more color. Then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna finish cooking it from the bottom side up. I'm gonna go ahead and lower it a little closer to the fire, but I can tell you, I'm standing right here and I can feel that heat, especially with those logs lit up. So I'm gonna move more of this heat over this way to hurry the breast along and so the thighs won't overcook too much. And action, there's our fire. Now we're gonna have a lot more heat right here on the breast side. Ooh, that's hot. That's what I want. I have not flipped it, I have not rotated it because I wanted that skin to get nice and tight and to get some color. I don't have the color I wanted, but we're gonna get there here shortly, so y'all stay with us. All right, this turkey's getting very close to being totally done, so I wanna baste the skin a little bit. This is unsalted butter, and this might get some of the rub to fall off. That's okay. Just gonna drizzle some on there. We can let it sit on there for a little bit. Woo, we got smoke. We're gonna let that butter kind of set there and kind of dry off just a little bit and we're gonna rotate it back around the other way. It's been about 20 minutes since we last checked it. So uh, let's see where we're at right here. Yeah, we're going up fast. We're at 129, 130. We're getting there. 20 more degrees. All right, my friends, the butter kind of finished dripping. I'm gonna come back around and let it finish cooking some more from the skin side down. Y'all see, I have a lot more fire on this side here. This is the breast side. I purposely ran a little less fire on this side because I don't want to dry my breast out and let it finish cooking before the thighs. So now the thighs are ahead. That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted my thighs to be done 
before my breast. Now I can hurry up the breast and I can push the thighs to 175, 180 degrees and they're still gonna be super juicy and super moist. But if you get your breast done first and your thighs aren't done, you're in trouble. You're gonna have a very dry breast by the time those thighs get done. So we're on track. It's gonna be just right. It's been almost four hours. We're running about 135, 40 degrees right now on the breast and the thighs are still sitting at about the mid 150s, low 160s. So we're almost there, but you can see it's starting to get a real pretty color with that extra heat and with that little bit of butter that we put on there, it's looking really, really nice. 140, so the breast is trying to catch up. We're getting there. All right, friends, our turkey's really close. We've got it right down by the fire now. We got the fire really hot and going. It's actually taken a good hour and a half, almost two now, longer than I even expected myself, but low and slow is the way to go with this, especially with a poultry, in this case, turkey, because you know when they get done done, that leg quarter wants to just fall off by itself. So we gotta be real careful about that and get the heat up real nice, slow and even, and I think we're just about there. Oof, it's hot. All right, so we're giving it the last little blast of heat just to make sure it cooks all the way through. And uh, we'll be pulling it in about 20 minutes. All right, let's see what it looks like on here. We're getting that really beautiful golden brown color. Look at that, just gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Perfection takes time. Yes, sir, yes, ma'am. I can't wait to get into this turkey. We're almost there. 160 over on this side. So we're right there. It's done. 182. Those thighs are done, 185, they're done. All right, friends, our turkey's done. We're tempting about 158, 159 on one side of breast, and on the other breast, it's right at 161, so it's time to pull it. We're gonna lay it on here, cut all the wires off, and go inside and eat turkey, baby. Bye -bye. <laughs> Is that crispy or what? Look at that. Just pops right off. Let's get this drumette off here the whole breast actually. Now that's the sign of perfection right there. You see how it's cooked all the way through? It's still nice and moist in there. All right, so let's get this thigh separated here. Look at that, just easy. I'm just trying to get the whole sections cut off. There we go. This is like chicharron. Yeah, ooh, that's good. Cool. Now friends, I will tell you I'm a better cook than a butcher, just an FYI. But look at that, it's perfectly cooked all the way through. Beautiful. Look at that moisture right there. I know, I know, everybody always goes for the slice on the breast. I like to take mine apart. I'm gonna plate it, but I gotta see what it tastes like first. Oh yeah. That merits two bites. <laughs> That's good, honey. We'll be right back. I still good. up. All right, so I'm gonna cut a little bit of this breast right here. Man, it cuts nice and easy. Look how, look at the sheen on there. This is good. Oh man. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. That's super good. I can taste the ingredients from the brine. Has a little bit of that tartness. Has a, from the lemon. I can taste a hint of the onion in there even. It's really fantastic. Just super good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Friggin' delicious, that's all I'm gonna say. It's super good. That breast is just right. I'm gonna take a piece of the thigh now and see how that turned out. Mm -hmm. hey, good, good, good. Yeah, buddy. Oh, you're gonna need to try this soon as we wrap this up. It is delicious. Come on, you want a piece of breast? Okay, let's do that. And Buddy wants a piece of the breast. All right, let's give Buddy a piece of the breast too. <laughs> Camera guys gotta wait a little bit longer. You guys know drumsticks are like a favorite at all fairs and events and whatever. I love that. How good. Flavor's amazing, fantastic. Guys and gals, I'm gonna tell you, even if your turkey that you buy this year for Thanksgiving has a six or 8% solution, you can brine it and increase the flavor. All right, I'm anxious to taste these potatoes and the corn. I'm gonna taste the corn first. Mm. Oh, there. This yellow sweet corn is so delicious. It doesn't even need butter. Mm. Breast is my favorite. I'm gonna put a little gravy on there and let it drizzle onto the potatoes. Look at that. But turkey and gravy, yeah, buddy. 
Oh, baby. Mm -hmm. That's good, good, good. Let's try the potatoes. A little gravy. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Man, I tell you what, I've been a rusted potato guy all my life. These golden potatoes are changing my mind. They are super good. This is the third time we cook with them. I'm in love. These potatoes are amazing. I'm in love with the potatoes. You know, the only thing that'll make this turkey better is an ice cold beer. Cowboy, baby. <laughs> we from Texas. Puro pinche cowboys. I love it. Cheers, my friends. Turkey turned out fantastic. Try you a grilled, open fire turkey this year. I promise you won't be disappointed. The flavor's fantastic. All right, friends, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Let me know in the comments what's your favorite kind of turkey. Inquiring minds want to know. If you're interested in our American Pitmaster rubs, go to pitmaster.us. If you want to up your barbecue game, go to pitmasterclass.us, and I'll see you there. If you have leftover turkeys, ain't nothing wrong with a taco. Everything goes better in a tortilla. Ooh and ain't no taco right without a little bit of salsa on there. Mm-hmm. 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 Everything's better in a tortilla. Yeah, buddy. Mm-hmm. Mm. We'll see y'all later. Boom! We're gonna make a roux. A roo 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 Hook em horns. <laughs> Just kidding. So I'm ready to take a big old bite and taste the turkey. All right, friends, worst case scenario, if it falls in the fire, we're gonna eat grilled turkey. What is it at? Just get tired, Danny. <laughs>